we get a promo from Jake the Snake Roberts, who has instructions for Damien. And those instructions are, you must squeeze the macho man harder than you ever squeezed before. And I thought, oh, God, yes, it's Jake Roberts and Randy Savage. I was very happy to hear this news. Not only were we very happy to hear the news, but it was paid off. They had yeah, a was fucking the great match. Uh, they sure did. We, we reviewed it before. We're going to review it again here in three minutes. So Jake is being all creepy. Macho man. Try me if you feel lucky. <laughs> again, knew exactly what he was doing. Then we go to Randy Savage, who's, he's, of course, just ran, ran, running his mouth as Elizabeth is over his shoulder. Dude, there's no subtlety with his Randy Savage character. You don't say. He asks her a question. She tries to answer. He tells her to shut her mouth. Shut up and keep polishing. Just keep polishing. And he says, if I lose tonight, it's all your fault. Of course. Okay. Of course. Mean Gene is interviewing Jake Roberts. Now, again? Jean's- Okay, yes, Didn't it's, we it's, it's, just it's, see an interview with Jake and there's been no wrestling yet? We just saw... Well, the show's only two minutes old. Fuck! <laughs> Jake, Gene's looking at us the camera. There's a hallway behind him and Jake's coming down the hallway behind Gene so Gene can't see him until Damien's head is on Gene's shoulder and Gene freaks out. And Jake warns him, don't turn your back on me. Nobody trusts a snake. And as he's cutting his promo, Gene is holding the microphone up and shaking like crazy. Oh, he's shaking like a leaf. There's a... There's a snake here. There's a snake. And Jake says, some people are content to sit in their sandbox and wait for life to come to them. I'm not one of those people. I'm going to get out of that sandbox. I'm going to reach out and take what I want. We go back to Vince and Jesse, who say, Randy Savage is no fool. He won't underestimate the snake. At this point, Jesse the Body Ventura on national network television in November of 1986 actually says... Talking about Gene and how he was shaking, he asks, was he holding a microphone or a vibrator? <laughs> Things are different, Vinny. I was not expecting Things that were word. very, very different back I then. I was not expecting that word to come out of Jesse's mouth on the show. Gene is now interviewing Savage and Liz. He begins to ask Liz if she's afraid of snakes. Again, didn't we just see an interview with these two? <laughs> but Brian, the show's only three minutes old. God damn it. Macho Man and his superhero costume interrupt. It's impossible he could be intimidated, he says. Yeah, I'm going to make boots and belts out of that creature. And Gene says, you're going to make clothing out of that snake? And he says, forget the snake. I'm going to make me a Jake skin belt. Yep, Jake skin belt and Jake skin boots. Yes. Okay, it is now time for Jake fucking Roberts versus Randy fucking Savage. An all-time classic match that no one ever talks about, because it came out of nowhere and didn't lead to anything. But, God, it's great! By the way, before we get into this match here, on the subject of Jake skin boots, so the other day I was was investigating some, some, you know, various... We need a new lock on our door, on our front mm. door, basically. So I was looking at various various uh, locks, and there's some really fancy ones that have like, you know, there you can use a key, or you can use a touch screen, or you can use fingerprints. Okay, so I'm exam I'm like looking at all of these and reading the manuals and that sort of thing. And the explains for the for the fingerprint to work, it says you can have no scars on your fingers, or your fingerprints cannot be worn down. <laughs> I was like, how fucking old do you have to be that your fingerprints are worn down? I don't think it's an age thing. So I, I bring this up because my, my, my dad was over the other day. Safe social distancing, everybody. But he's over and he's got these, these gloves on. And granted, it's, it, it had been raining. So, you know, it's not like it was, you know, 85 degrees or whatever. He's got these thin gloves on and, and Paisley's thinks his gloves are pretty cool and uh, we were asking about his gloves and he says yeah i wear them all the time uh my my skin it just seems so worn out i was like how in the fuck did things like this happen so apparently i found somebody whose skin was worn out my own dad congratulations i guess maybe the the fingerprint sensor wouldn't work for him well yeah don't get you shouldn't get it either because that's your future it's true that's your my, DNA. my skin's gonna wear out luckily you can put a key in there 
That, yes, that's better then. All right, so this match was fucking incredible. Two heels. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, th- th- this is this is the biggest reason. It's well, it's not the biggest reason. It's great, but WWF in the 1980s almost never did heel versus heel matches, and her, never without a reason. This is just Randy Savage is the Intercontinental Champion. Jake Roberts, I guess, is under title shot. Let's put him out there. Now, I think when I was thinking back on this, I think this was just a test run. To see how the crowd would react to Jake and a, a, a I can't, I had not even a, ba- a babyface role, but the lesser of two evils. Cause the way he wrestled this match, he wrestled it from behind. And he comes out, the crowd's immediately chaining DDT. Clearly, even though he has done nothing heroic or noble, just by virtue of being awesome and having awesome matches and having a cool move and a cool gimmick and doing cool promos, he's gotten himself over. So I think this was just their test to see if the crowd would really accept him as a, as a babyface. Clearly they did and, uh, by Mania 3, he's a full-fledged babyface. I'm not sure exactly how long that takes, but I think I, I think this is just them doing a test run. But regardless, it's two evil, evil, evil bastards. And they get in this ring, and both men know the other is just as evil as them. They're both completely paranoid and scared of each other. But at the same time, they also want to outdo each other to see who can cheat more. Now, on top of all that, They're very, 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 very good pro wrestlers. I didn't have the time, but I want to go back and make a GIF loop of all the lockups in this match. Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord in heaven. (laughs) The fucking best lockups you've ever seen. They're just incredible. These men were grabbing each other to fight. So they're cheating like crazy. The old school logic was, unless it was absolutely necessary, the babyface never put a leg on the ropes. They always kicked out to show they were still fighting. These guys, if they were anywhere near the ropes, were putting both legs, both hands, <laughs> you're getting the ropes every time they can. They're taking each other down with hair pulls. Jake does this sweet headlock takeover, and they just both grab the hair and yank on it. It's a hair tug of war. Jesse just says, I'm sure we're going to see plenty of rule breaking in this match. He's exactly right. And... Jake, as I noted, has a cool move, the DDT, and he keeps going for it several times in this match. The first time he tries it, it's out of nowhere. We're like two minutes in. Savage pushes him away and flees out of the ring, and Jake is heartbroken. That was his chance. If he had hit hit that move, he'd be the Intercontinental Champion right now. And it's amazing because the first time he goes for the move, he just goes for the move. The second time he goes for the move, like you can hear some cheers. Third time he goes for the move, there's definitely cheers. Every time he went for this move, the fans wanted it more and yes. more. It was it was amazing to watch. This guy, both of these guys. You know who these men are, Vinny? They're masters of professional wrestling. They really are. They are fucking incredible workers. So much to learn from this. So, as I mentioned, Jake is very, very subtly the lesser of the two evils here. When uh, I, I didn't even mention the beginning of the match, before the bell rings, Jake comes out and he's menacing Elizabeth with Damien, the snake. And Elizabeth flees, runs to Randy's corner. Randy first scolds her for being scared. Then he goes to scold Jake. Don't you mess with my property, essentially. But then Randy sees the snake and then Randy hides it behind Liz. Later, Randy keeps running out of the ring. Eventually, Jake is the one who has to go chase him. Randy gets the heat by, uh, Jake tries the DDT, Savage drives him into the corner, Randy gets the heat in him for a while, so Jake is the one making the comeback at the end. In the middle of this, Savage ties Jake up in the ring ropes, throws the bag with a snake in it under the ring, and we go to commercial. We come back just in time to see Jake free himself. He catches Savage with an e-lift coming in, but before he can follow it, he has to go rescue his snake, because even this heartless son of a bitch, is loyal to his pet, Damien. He has to make sure the snake is okay. Jesus Christ. I mean, it was it was dumb because, you know, he loves his snake, but he wraps in a fucking bag with a and with just, a rope on it. And just throws it into the corner. He just throws it in the corner of the ring. So, so Savage's diabolical, you know, move was to grab the snake and put it under the ring. Still in a bag, still tied up. Savage has to go get the bag from under the ring and put it back in the corner. It's like, yes. what the fuck difference does this make for this poor fucking snake? 
It can't see well, shit. It doesn't help the snake I at mean, all. It doesn't help, but you know what, Vinny? Yes. It's probably safer under the ring it probably than is. in the goddamn corner. But you're Jake, and you want the snake there to mess with Savage's head. I, I guess so, but we're not we're not looking out for the snake here, Vinny. This is not the be- this is not what was best for the snake. No. So there's a thousand rope breaks in this match as guys just refuse to kick out. Uh, eventually, Jake goes to get the snake. They're, they're, they're outside. They're outside again. Savage hides behind Liz again. So Jake says, all right, you're going to hide behind your woman. I'll get my snake. He turns his back. Savage posts him. They go back and forth for a while. And then Savage throws Dave Hebner down. And that's to keep that in mind. They're mentioned specifically. Savage throws Dave Hebner down. And the brawl continues. And then Jake throws Dave Hebner down. And then as it is announced, the bell rings and Howard Finkel declares... As a result of the uncontrollable nature of this contest, the referee has disqualified both parties. Well, Vince clearly wrote that fucking line. Well, he's right. That's how it should be announced every time. If you must do a double DQ, explain it's a result of the uncontrollable nature of this contest. And you know what, Brian? This contest's nature was uncontrollable. Yes, it was. So Hebner gets thrown down the second time, and he fucking literally does a cartwheel... On his own head, <laughs> flies out of the ring and lands on the announce table, which is made of like titanium. It, yes. it doesn't even bend. Yes. And he falls onto the ground and Vince screams, He fell on his head. I'm like, Fuck, that was a fucking crazy bump right there. Then five minutes later for the next match, Dave Hebner's a referee. It plays into things. 20 minutes later, Dave Hebner's a referee. This all plays into things. <laughs> is this fucking guy Superman or what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> And he's not the ref by the end, so they did have two. I'm not sure what happened there. But the the bell rings, and Savage goes to grab a chair, but Jake grabs a snake. And so Savage flees, and Jake is left in the ring standing tall. So that's all noteworthy. But bottom line is, this match is amazing. If you give this match a finish, it's a good pay-per-view match. Yeah, but you know what? Here's the thing with that finish. We didn't have a finish. But when it was over, if they would have put tickets on sale that night for the show, I'd have been... Begging my parents, please let me go to the Seattle Center Coliseum. I've got to see this fucking match again. Yes. I would be dying to go. Yes, yes. That's all valid and true, but uh, uh, I'm reviewing this for the purposes of people in 2020 asking, should I watch this episode? Oh, hell yeah. Are you Which fucking is, kidding yes! me? Yes! <laughs> Immediately! Dude.